Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to insert data into a pre-existing table. So you might see some code on the screen here. This is from my previous video. So we're building on the same example. If you haven't seen that video about how to create and drop tables, I'll leave a link in the description below. Uh, you want to check it out? Great. If not, let's continue with the insert statement. So before I get into the video, just wanted to say if you could destroy that like button for me, I'd really appreciate it. And if you want to support the channel, then you know click subscribe. That will really help me out, helps me out hugely. And with that said, let's crack on. So you came here to see an insert statement. So let's go ahead and insert some data into this table. So if I if I have a look at what's in that table, let's do um, let's refresh the tables to the left hand side. Okay, DBO config. If I say select the top 1,000 rows, as you can see at the bottom of the screen here, you will see that there uh, is no data. You know what? I'm just getting distracted because there's a red squiggly line. I'm going to show you how to fix that. It's just an extra tip. Now if we go to, let me see if I can actually remember where it is. Um, Okay, so click on edit. Under IntelliSense, there is actually a button that you can click on refresh local cache. Now, if I click that, let's see if I'm a liar. If I click on that, ah, uh, well, that's lucky. I thought it wasn't going to go then. I thought I'm going to look like a right plunker. So, as you can see, what that does is if you've just newly created a table, uh, SQL Server won't have refreshed the cache that stores all of the table names and the store procedure names and column names and all that kind of stuff. So if you click on that button, it will refresh it so you don't get that red squiggly line on the IntelliSense. I hope you found that useful. Just a little side note. All right, so as you can see, we have no uh, values okay, in that table. So we're going to go ahead and insert them. So let's crack on then. So the first thing you want to do is write insert into and you want to put the name of the table. Because I've got the name of the table up here, I'm literally going to copy it. I'm going to paste it there. As you can see, I've got the red squiggly line, which is unusual because I haven't got it here. Obviously, um, SQL Server just hasn't refreshed this part of the page. Let's try again, shall we? Edit, IntelliSense, refresh local cache. Okay, it's, it's uh, for some reason it's not it's not happy with that top one. It is fine though. So anyway, let's let's carry on. Let's ignore that for a second. In fact, I'll tell you what we do. Let's open a new query window. So we've got insert into DBO config. So the schema name and the table name. I'm storing the uh, schema name and the uh, table name in square brackets just in case we happen to be using a keyword for the DBO for the schema story or for the table. In this instance, we're using the default uh, schema, which is DBO. We could have created a new one if we wanted to. And the table name's config. Neither of those are keywords, but I think it's good practice to always use square brackets because you never know if you're gonna be using this script in future versions of Visual Studio, well, sorry, SQL Server Management Studio even, how do you know what's gonna be a keyword in the future? They may change their keywords, for instance, and, and they, they do sometimes. Right, so then what you're gonna to wanna to do is you want to do open and closed round brackets and in here we're going to list the columns that we're going to be inserting now you don't have to do this and you might find that different people do their insert statements in different ways this is how i like to do it i think it's a good way to do it doing it this way does avoid a little ambiguity so i like to list out the column names when i'm inserting data just for simplicity for clarity so We've got two columns that I'm going to be inserting into. One is called key and the other one is called value. Now, as you may notice, they're both highlighted blue. And the reason they're highlighted blue is because they are actually keywords. Some people say, so well, reserved words even. Some people will say don't you know use reserved words. Well, you know, that's what that's what the square brackets are there for at the end of the day. And I wanted to call my column key and I wanted to call my other column value. So I don't really want to make up you know, unusual names for columns when I can just use the square brackets. So that's exactly why I use square brackets. Now, if I flip back quickly to the create statement, what you'll notice is you'll notice there's also an ID. But what you will also notice, hopefully, is that it's a primary key. So I just wanted to say, you don't have to specify the primary key, okay? All you need to do is specify the actual values 
for the non-primary keys, for the columns that are not primary keys, and SQL Server will go ahead and actually populate the key for you. Okay, you don't want to be specifying a primary key. Let it do its thing. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to type the uh, the keyword values. I like to put a space in if I'm in, if I'm going to be inserting more than one uh, record, which I'm going to in this example to show you. In fact, I'll do I'll do one and I'll do multiple. So open and close brackets, and as you may have guessed, all we've got to do now is specify the values. So if I if I specify let's say key one, uh, and I'm going to keep it really simple, value one. If I run that, hopefully it will be okay. One row affected. Let's go ahead and do a quick select from this table just to make sure that the records went in. Select star from, highlight it, run it. Excellent, I don't know if you can see that, and I don't think I can increase the size of this value actually. Can't I can't increase the, uh, the zoom on it unfortunately, but hopefully your resolution allows you to see that we've got one record in there. Now, I've actually got a constraint on the table, so if I try and run that again, I'm going to get an error because I've got a unique key constraint. So it's important to remember if your table has any constraints on it, like I've got a, a constraint here, I've got a unique constraint on the key field. It goes without saying, but obviously you can't insert that more than once. What I'll do is I'll drop the table, I'll create the table, and if we flip back, control tab, I can insert it again if I want to now. Okay. But obviously, if I was just going to be inserting one value, what I'd probably do is I'd probably lay it out like that. Just looks a bit cleaner. But because I'm going to be doing multiple values, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste that. Let's do it a few times. At the end of every line, unless it's the last line, you want to put a comma. Okay, there we go. Now, hopefully, yeah, all of the uh, error messages have gone. Now, obviously, this this um, column here has a constraint on it to make sure it's unique. So, obviously, we have to make sure this is unique. And that should work absolutely fine. If I'm inserting values like this, you could argue I'm a bit of an old timer. I like to put a go statement at the end. The go statement simply says everything up until this statement and between potentially another go statement. So say for example, we had a go statement here. It will basically say, execute all of that in between the go statements uh, in one go, basically, as a batch. And obviously if we don't have a go statement above it, what it'll do is it'll just execute everything before that go statement right to the top of the page. Some people use them, some people don't. This is not like a SQL reserved word. This is literally a word that is used in SQL Server Management Studio. So in other words, the tool that we're using there to write some SQL. And it will just basically say, send all of this to the actual server, the database, and execute it as a batch. So just uh, wanted to clarify that in case um, you wasn't sure. Um, let's go ahead and, and run it. If you want, you can click on the pass button first. It'll tick just to make sure that SQL Server believes that the code will execute fine and it says that it will it's important to remember that the code hasn't executed yet it's sql service just passed it to make sure that there's no syntactical errors and things like that so let's go ahead and run it execute five rows were affected sounds good to me let's highlight and just just in case you didn't know if i if i run this it'll run the whole thing right but if you just highlight what you want to run you can you can select execute and just highlight the bits that you want so I'm going to highlight just the bit that I want, which is the select statement. I'm going to click execute. And as you can see, hopefully as you can see, we've got ourselves, uh, let me find that. We've got ourselves five, uh, five uh, records here, five rows or five records, whatever you prefer terminology wise. And of course the ID, one, two, three, four, five. The keys are key one, two, three, four, five. And the values are all the same one because we didn't stipulate in the create table that they couldn't be unique. In fact, we didn't stipulate we didn't stipulate that they couldn't be null either. So we could have put whatever we wanted into value, which is exactly how I wanted it to be. And with that said, that about wraps the video up. I hope you found it useful. If you did find it useful, go ahead and make my day and click that like button. And uh, if you want to see similar content to this in the future, why not make my entire week by subscribing to the channel? 
And with that said, take care and I will hopefully see you in the next one. Also, quick one, if you've got any questions, throw them in the comment section below. I will do my best to respond to any questions you may have about this video. With that said, take care everybody.